Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Bishop McDevitt High School, my alma mater. And uh, thanks, Sister Mary Ann, for having us here. Principal, Sister Mary, she was just here somewhere. She's out there. Uh, and also, all the uh, faculty and students of Bishop McDevitt, we're proud to be here to uh, introduce legislation. And uh, just want to thank uh, the students for being here as well. Uh, very much appreciate uh, your attendance today. Uh, thanks again, and uh, I just wanted to, to uh, introduce legislation, like I said, a very serious issue of hazing. Hazing is a much like cyberbullying, which I just spoke about. It's a form of bullying. I was pleased to have recently, like I said before, have my law of cyberbullying passed into legislation. There are now real consequences in Pennsylvania for cyberbullying. Someone via social media, including Twitter, Facebook, etc., Cyberbullying is now a misdemeanor of the third degree, which means it's up to one year imprisonment and a $2,500 fine. I'd like to uh, see the same consequences implemented for those who haze, and my anti hazing legislation would accomplish that goal. Many people associate hazing with college fraternities. However, it extends well beyond that. There have been many issues where high school sports teams were hazing the teammates, much to, much to the uh, disbelief of teachers and parents. Currently, Pennsylvania does not have an anti-hazing law, does have an anti-hazing law, which was enacted in 1986. The current law makes hazing a misdemeanor of the third degree, and once again, up to one year imprisonment and a $2,500 fine. If a person commits a more serious offense in the course of hazing, that could be separately charged, for example, manslaughter or sexual assault. Hazing is generally defined as any action or situation that is recklessly or intentionally endangers the mental or physical health or safety of a student, or which willfully destroys property for the purpose of initiation into an organization. It includes whipping, beating, forced exercise, exposure to the elements, sleep dep deprivation, forced consumption of food or drink. It also includes forced activity that could result in extreme embarrassment. The current law, the current law also requires public and private colleges to have written anti-hazing policies with a program for enforcement of those policies. I ever, however, I felt that the law needed to go further. My legislation would propose that hazing should apply to all persons, not just to students. This way, it will also apply, for example, to sports teams or clubs that are not school-affiliated. Secondary schools should also be required to have anti-hazing policies with enforcement programs, like colleges and universities must have today. The reason I felt so strongly about enacting this legislation and having this press event today in order to spread the message about these horrific incidents is that students from leading anti-hazing advocacy groups show that 47% 40 of high school students, 47% experience hazing, and that is reported by male and female student, students alike. 25% of these students report having been affected of, ha of hazing before the age of 13. And I think uh, this is the, that's the, the deplorable. I'd also like to take you, uh, tell you about specifically about some notable hazing incidents in the last 10 years. In 2004, in Sandwich, Massachusetts, nine high school football players faced felony charges after a freshman teammate lost his spleen in the hazing ritual. In 2011, two Andover high school basketball players were expelled and five were suspended for pressuring under, underclassmen to play wet biscuit, where the loser was forced to eat a semen-soaked cookie. 2014, multiple team members of the Saraville War Memorial High School in Saraville, New Jersey, were taken into custody, arrested and charged with flagrant sexual assaults on young players. In the darkness, a freshman football player would be pinned to the locker room. His arms and feet were held down 
by by uh, multiple upperclassmen. Then they were then he was sexually abused. In 2014, the Central Buck School District canceled the rest of the, in Pennsylvania canceled the rest of the football season at Central Buck's West High School after it said and learned that players had subjected themselves the rookies to humiliating hazing and a preseason initiation. In a letter to parents, Superintendent Dave Weitzel said the investigation determined that determined that new players on the Doylestown baseball team had been required to grab the private parts of other players while fully clothed in front of the rest of the team. He said most of the players took part in the activity, which he called offensive and disrespectful. Thank you again for being here. I want to now introduce uh, the, chair, the majority chair of the House uh, Education Committee, good friend from York County, Stan Siller. Thank you, Ron. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, as many have heard, Representative Marsico has been a leading advocate in the House and in Pennsylvania on bullying and hazing legislation. So I want to thank him for his leadership. Today, you know, one of the things I find amazing is that we sometimes think of who would be hazed or bullied. And I actually have had uh, students like cheerleaders come to me about uh, being hazed or being bullied. So it's not just always those of us, as, as a kid in school, I was kind of one of those geeky, dorky kids, skinny, and very much a book, in fact, one of my nicknames was bookworm. So, you know, as, as we talk about it today, things, we're seeing a lot different. You know, I hear some adults who uh, were in school and said, oh, well, you know, uh, this, well, that's just fun. That's just, that's what we did in school, you know, and, and that's okay. Well, it's not okay. Uh, you know, what we're finding today, we're finding a lot of students. And, you, and you've seen it on the TV and you've seen it in the news. Higher teen suicides because of hazing and bullying. We're seeing more violence in the schools because of it. And it's not acceptable. We have to send a very clear message. And that's what Representative Marco has been doing in his legislation prior and this new legislation he's introducing. Things change in society. It is not acceptable anymore to do those kind of things. You know, and many things is that I think sometimes people think, oh, well, it's just that child who may be affected by it or those few individuals. The truth is hazing affects almost all students in a school district where it's happening. That's what people forget because kids are afraid they're going to be hazed, so they either ignore it or they do certain things to make sure that they are not hazed as well. So that is very disruptive in a learning environment. We mean to make our schools where it is fun to come to, it's an educational experience for everybody to choose what and how they want to take their learning experiences forward. So I am very supportive as education chairman to see Ron's legislation, Representative Marcus's legislation, move forward. And I'm 100% behind what he's been trying to do. And the other thing that we need to remember is hazing in a lot of cases starts at home. It really does. And too many times parents, parents want to defend their children when they commit these kind of acts. It is time for parents to stand up and they themselves to hold themselves responsible as well as their children at home about hazing and bullying other students. You know, I hear parents, you, you've, you've heard them as well on TV, is like, well, how could this have happened? You know, my son or daughter didn't want this to happen. Well, it's because you didn't do anything when the school or a teacher reported to you about what your child was doing in school. You attacked the teachers. You attacked the administration. Let's not look at teachers and administrators as somebody who doesn't care about students. The teachers and administrators in school are there for the best interests of students and are trying to make sure that every child has an opportunity to learn and do and have a career that benefits them in their best ways. So it is time for all of us, not just you in school as, as students, but also as adults, that we sit back and say, we won't tolerate this in our schools. And we're going to respect teachers and administrators when they bring it forward. We're not, as parents, going to sit there and say, well, you know, that's just, they're being kids. It is time for it to stop. And again, I want to thank Representative Marsico for leading this. It is so important. You know, we can come into as schools and we can talk to students about it. But we also need to get the message out to parents and adults 
that they too have to be involved in stopping this hazing habit that has taken place across this country for many years because of the effect we're seeing it have on all students and our communities as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chairman. Uh, thank you for your support and uh, thank you for your, your leadership as our education chair in the House. And uh, so next I ha we have to speak is uh, John Callahan, uh, the Executive Director for the Pennsylvania School Boards Association. Thanks. Hey, good morning. My name's John Callahan. I'm actually Senior Director of Government Affairs for Pennsylvania School Board Association. Um, I got a promotion, which is even better, Ron. I'd love that. Um, I got one today, too. I know. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, it's awesome. But I tell you what, um, when it comes down, uh, first off, Pennsylvania School Board Association, we represent all the school, uh, public schools across the uh, state. Um, and we provide great services for those schools. And one of the key services that we provide is policy services. And many of you might not know um, what policy services are, but they're kind of the rule book within the schools uh, that says this is what is acceptable and this isn't what is acceptable. And these are the punishments for it, or these are the repercussions, um, or these are going to be the standards for the schools. Um, and those, they're, they're, they're thick books, and Stan's probably seen these, th you know, there's probably about 50,000 pages of different rules because of different laws um, that give us the ability to do what we do. Um, and this, when it comes down to um, anti-hazing, we actually already have a policy right now and across most of these schools, districts in Pennsylvania that says anti-hazing is not acceptable. And I, I, I would venture to say all the school districts across Pennsylvania have these policies. This law that, that uh, Representative Marsco has introduced gives more enforcement, gives more backing to those policies. And that's key because we want to be able to send a stronger message that hazing is not acceptable. We have that right now, but this gives a stronger, more, more backed message. And it's, uh, Representative Marsco has done this uh, with bullying and giving us a, a stronger um, club to work with on that. And I tell you what, on this, this bill, he's put in there the enforcement behind it and in essence saying this is not acceptable. And we all know that. It's not acceptable. But we need to have the repercussions. We need to have the oomph behind uh, the policy in the school district to say you can't do this in our school district if you're a booster club or anything of that sort, and you can't certainly do it if you're one of the teachers or even a school and a team. Um, this is the way to go. This is, the, this is usually something that I would say, hey, you know, when you mandate on school districts to do things, we don't like that. But I tell you what, in this case, it's a mandate we already know that's in place. We already have the policies. This gives us the extra enforcement. And that's why the School Board Association is excited to be here and supporting Ron uh, today. We want to set the record straight that, quite frankly, hazing is unacceptable in public schools and it hurts kids. And kids are, are our main priority. So I'd like to thank uh, Representative Marsco and Chairman Saylor for doing this. This is, this is uh, a step forward and something we need. We need in public education, we need in schools today. Uh, our main mission is to protect the kids and that's what we're going to be here doing. And the two gentlemen in the group behind me know um, that we have to do this, and this is why we're here. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, John. Uh, appreciate your support and uh, your uh, help with this and uh, uh, being here today, but also spreading the message to all the schools uh, in Pennsylvania. Um, next, we have uh, with us a good friend of mine, Dave Reddick, who is the president and CEO and director of the National Character Education Foundation. And uh, pleased to have Dave here. He's also going to introduce uh, Bill Sanders, who, as many of you know, just spoke at the assembly earlier and, uh, and did a, uh, it was a powerful message, as we know. And we thank, I want to thank Bill for being here as well. And uh, we're certainly honored to have you here, Bishop McDevitt, and in the Harrisburg area. Uh, Dave? Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. He, he failed to mention uh, sometimes when you're the CEO and the president, you're also the janitor at times. <laughs> um, that's what leadership is, right? You lead by example. This bill was long, long waited. We need to have it. I mean, there's just no benefit in harassment. There's no benefit in abuse. There's no benefit in humiliation. I mean, those are the three words that describe hazing. That's what you're doing to someone else when you haze them. You humiliate them. 
you abuse them. Back in the day, we've had this conversation, hazing was benign. It was a practical joke. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I'm, I'm up there. I graduated a long time ago. And um, it was benign stuff. Nobody was really getting hurt or anything from it. Today, the whole game has changed. I mean, to urinate on somebody, to make them part of your group, I don't think that's edification. It doesn't make that person feel any better about themselves. It doesn't build team unity or team spirit, that's for sure. I don't even think it builds bonds between you. I mean, think about it. What would build a bond between me and my teammate is when he, when he encourages me when I miss a ground ball. Okay? That happens. I strike out. Or I hit a home run. You know, I catch the winning pass. I mean, you know, that's what I need. You know, I don't want somebody abusing me just to make me feel like I'm part of it. And we've taken this whole idea of hazing to criminal activities, actions. I mean, it's, it's gone beyond. If he doesn't step in now, it won't just be, you know, the suicide. It'll be actual murders. I mean, people will take it to the point where it won't even sustain life during the actual exercise of hazing. I can see it getting there. And so there has to be an opposition. There has to be a Ron Marsico, a Stan Saylor. There has to be the guys that have these positions of authority to step up and say, okay, I've heard it from all of you. I find nothing good in it, and it's getting worse, and I know we have it on the books, but I am going to give you a bigger bat, a club to swing, because I want these guys and girls to second-guess what they're doing before they do it, and hopefully they just won't do it because there is a punishable side to this thing that could be severe, and it could stay on your record. That's what the goal is. And I'm not normally a, a – Bill, am I normally a guy that talks about negative things? No. Nope. I try not to. I mean, I – you know, but sometimes you just have to. And when he asked me, when Ron asked me, Mr. Marsico asked me to come out here, I wouldn't miss it. I would not miss this opportunity to be able to speak about this issue. I have a teenager, Riverside, 11th grader, baseball player, wannabe golfer, motocross. And not one time has he ever said this was an activity that he'd want to participate in. And you'd ask him why. He'd say, because it doesn't do anybody any good, Dad. There's nothing good in that. You know, it just says the whole story. Now, maybe he's my son, but he's not an angel. You know, he's exposed to all the worldly things that are out there. I mean, the Internet's at everybody's fingertips. So he sees it. He understands it. But I think he understands that there is a right and a wrong. And um, I'm glad he's siding on the side that's right. Um, I want to introduce a, a gentleman who's uh, been a friend of mine for a long time. He's been a – he's an author. Uh, a co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Teenage Soul series. Um, we've written a book together. Actually, he did most of the writing. I did a little part at the beginning. Um, but we've had the same kindred spirit about helping kids, whether they're in kindergarten or 12th grade or even in college, how to become better people, how they can become successful just through their behavior, just how they treat other people, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we had this opportunity to do the press conference, we had asked Bill to come out here to do an assembly before the press conference, and he graciously drove nine hours to get here. He also is a supporter of this. And he said something at the assembly. He wasn't going to be up here, but he said something at the assembly that I'd ask him to kind of say because it kind of puts its arms around hazing in a little different way that I hadn't thought about. So I'm going to give it over to Bill. Thanks. You know, uh, my grandson was over the other night and spent two nights. He's six years old. His name is Logan James, and he loves hanging out at Grandpa's. We were getting ready to take him home, and he looked in his backpack, and he found an extra pair of socks and an extra pair of brand-new folded underwear. And he held them up and said, Grandpa, looks like I'm spending another night. <laughs> you know, I have, a safe, I have a culture of safety and love at my house, and my grandkids love it because I know how to spoil them. I want that same feeling for every kid in this school and every school, on every team, and it can't happen if there's hazing. You know, to me, hazing is like bullying on steroids, okay? Now, when you pass on your pain to somebody, bullying, which is usually a 
one-on-one, -on -one, maybe a couple on one or two, that person wants none of it. They're defenseless, you have more power, you know how not to get caught, and you hurt them on purpose, usually because you're passing on some pain. People that don't have pain don't pass it on. In fact, you can just listen to what people say, and you can know that it comes from their heart. So if there's a bunch of real bad words, there's some junk going on inside. So bullying is a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, -on -one, and it's pushed on. That person wants to hide. They want to get away, but they many times they can't. Hazing, they allow it because this person has created a culture of you needing to be with us. And it's, hazing with a team is no different than a girl who will stay with a boyfriend, and high school girls do this to... Uh, I would say from the letters I've gotten in 30 years, 30 or 40 or 50 percent are accepting abuse by a boyfriend in high school because they so desperately need a boyfriend in high school. Now, they allow it, they accept it. And that's where hazing, uh, that's why when we empower the students, that's like today's assembly, I want every one of the students here at this school and every school we speak in to believe that they are special, they are worthy, they are wonderful, they are miracles, they, they alone have talents and gifts that if they don't show the world, the world will never see it. And you don't have to do anything deplorable, degrading, uh, to be a part of any person or any group. And that's where students have to lift up, as well as students that see it happen but walk by. The most powerful person in the school uh, is the person who walks by, the bystander. And, you know, with laws like this, we're putting some meat with it, and we're allowing bystanders to stand by those kids and stand up for those kids and not just be uh, those kids that don't say anything. So don't give anybody any power. Don't need to be a part of any group or any person or any clique to where you would go through something that is uh, going to scar you because it does. We read the letters from years later when they're adults. It does. And then there's also this culture and code of silence that keeps us from getting help. So for every young person, you are worthy, you are wonderful. Don't allow it to happen to you or anybody else. Stand up. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, thank you, uh, all of you, for being here and standing up uh, and advocating for this uh, legislation. By the way, it's House Bill 1574. So you can help with this by contacting your legislators and asking them to support this bill, House Bill 1574, okay? Got that? And then uh, we certainly have a, a great uh, anti-hazing team here advocating for this, and I'm certainly really proud and honored to have all of you here to speak uh, in support of this legislation. So at this time, uh, is there any questions from anyone, students, media? See you none? Okay, thanks for being here. Appreciate uh, your support. Spread the message. No hazing. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right.